What is up, YouTube Loop Troop and fellow Pokemon Pocketeers? We're, we've been celebrating a four year anniversary over on Twitch. I started back in 2020 uh, in November around my birthday. Also, my birthday was last Saturday. So, but I had some goals and things to do. And if we reached 80 subs during this event, I said that I would do a Pokemon pocket tier list. So what that entails is every single card. And I have the tier list ready to go. And that's what we're going to be doing. So. I got people in chat too, so you'll probably be seeing them off over to the side over this way. Um, so they'll probably have their ideas of things and whatnot, but um, I'm gonna put my own twist and see what we wanna do, right? So let's go ahead and kick this off. So we're gonna start with the grass months. I'm gonna go in order of where they are. So unfortunately, I mean, we're gonna start with Ivysaur, Venusaur, Bulbasaur, and uh, of course, Venusaur EX. I'm also going to go ahead and pop open my Pokemon pocket as well, because what I want to do is make sure that everything that I actually go to is going to have accurate descriptions. And this is the best way for me to do that. I could probably go use like a little search tool or something too, but I like using my own Pokemon pocket app that I have on my computer. So Let's go ahead and go over here to the Pokedex. And surprisingly, one of the only Mons that I don't have is um is Venusaur non EX. So I want to make sure that I know exactly what it does. So I'm just going to head over to Untapped real quick too and look at that. You know what? Maybe I'll just use Untapped. I use Untapped for this instead of using my um own Pokemon Pocket account. That might be a little bit better. Let's see what we got here. Pokemon Pocket, Pokemon Pocket, Pokemon Cards. Let's see, so it looks like what Venusaur does is Mega Drain, heal 30 damage from this Pokemon. So it does the same thing, just doesn't do as much damage. So first off, for Ivysaur, or where's Bulbasaur? Bulbasaur is right here. Bulbasaur needs two energy. I'm putting him at B tier because he needs two energy to be able to attack. Uh, typically, you don't want to have him up front when it first starts out, but I think that he's an okay Mon. Uh, overall, I think that most of these grass cards are okay, but that's that's just kind of how I feel about it. Move him down personally to see. Well, that would be your tier list. I think that, I think that Bulbasaur is pretty decent. Ivysaur, I think, is okay as well. Honestly, Ivysaur doing um, the amount of damage that he does is also like not bad. Like he does 60 damage and if you get the three energy, and that's if that's if you have a like Pitil, Pit, what is it? Uh, Lily, Lilygen or Patil or whatever it's called. I think that this is pretty good, you know, because you're getting prepared to go into the card that I would think is kind of A tier. This is only if you get this out, though. If you get this out and you have four points of energy, because of in conjunction with the other cards, and you're going to be building around this anyways, Venusaur is going to be pretty good. Because Venusaur, uh, being able to heal for the 30 HP every single time, plus 50 with Erica, and dealing 100 damage each time, there's not very many things that can take this out. And... Um, and in a few hits, especially it only ha it has 190 HP, which is the most HP in the game, you know, but, but that's good. So you're, you're not really trying to really attack a lot with this. You just want to survive and you got the HP to do that with these. So I think that's pretty good. Now this Venusaur I'm putting down here is, well, you know, what? I'm gonna put this Venusaur down here in C tier simply because you're not doing a whole lot of damage and you only have, I think a hundred and it's 160 HP, but that 160 HP means you can be killed by anything that's doing um, about 150 plus a Giovanni, which in this case can be a Mewtwo. So that's why I'm putting it out here in C tier. Unfortunate, but that's just kind of how I see it. Caterpie, I think Caterpie is going to be an E. I may move it down to F tier, but there's some other Pokemon down here in F tier that are just really, really bad. Once we get to them, you'll you'll understand my reasoning behind that. 
but it's it's just really sad that Caterpie um it basically has find a friend it doesn't do any damage but you have to be in the attacking position in order to actually make caterpie work so caterpie only having 50 hp means it's probably going to die quite often now you could use this to to call out some of your pokemon but there are other options you can use to make this deck a little bit more consistent being professor's research and pokeball so i'm not even gonna like say that you know this is you can probably use it in conjunction with this but i probably wouldn't because sacrificing one point for what caterpie is doing and you don't know what it's going to give you it could give you a, a Venusaur when you really need to get an Ivasaur and you already have a Venusaur. You don't know how it's going to work. So it's not really that great to me. And that's going to, I'm, I'm going to put the whole line kind of down here. I think that Metapod is also something that's really not that great. It can deal 30 damage and it does have what 90, does it have 90 HP or how much does Metapod have? It has 80 HP. And I just don't think that Metapod is going to be doing enough damage i don't think it's going to be sustainable up front either you probably want to keep it in the back line but if you keep it in the back line it means that you had to move it back from caterpie and it does need a two points to retreat if this had no points to retreat be way better way better but because it needs two points to retreat it's just not good because you're gonna have to spend two energy to get it out or two energy to attack that's why a lot of people aren't using butterfree which i think butterfree's ability is actually pretty decent it's healing 20 for every single time you use it and you can set it on the back line but you never want these up front you never want these up front and butterfree is okay to be up front but you don't really have to have it up there but if butterfree's in the background healing everything that's really nice so I think that this is this is pretty good. So Weedle, on the other hand, I think Weedle is a little bit better than Caterpie, simply because with Caterpie, you are going to be able to, um, I mean, because with Weedle, you are going to hope you can attack. You can actually add some pressure. And Weedle does do 20 damage and has 50 HP. So there are some things that can kill this, um, like Farfetch can kill this with a Giovanni, but for the most part, it's, it's kind of here or there. Um, let's see, Kakuna, Kakuna, let's see, 80 HP, it is a nice step up. And then you can go into Beedrill, which I think is still a C tier Mon. Beedrill has some good HP and with, in conjunction with Erica, you actually can do some decent damage. A hunt, uh, basically this is a, this is a gold duck with extra HP can take extra hits. So for the most part, you can deal about 140 damage before you get taken out. If you have Erica, you can probably heal about, you can probably deal about 210. So pretty decent Mon if you can get that line out, but yeah, I have somebody in chat asking, uh, are you judging based on potential slash lines or alone? I'm judging on potential lines and it's alone. so like, if it's by itself, I mean, here's, here's the thing about Pokemon pocket. You can't judge Butterfree without judging its evolutions because you're never going to get to Butterfree without its evolutions. Butterfree would probably be a B tier Pokemon if these E tier Pokemon weren't here. If these were better and they were in D, then Butterfree might be a B tier being able to heal every single Pokemon every turn for 20, 20 damage in the back line. But because you're hardly ever going to get there, this has to be a C tier, not a B tier. So you have to judge the entire line because this is all one Pokemon. You can't just judge it based off by itself. Um, but, but yeah, and some Pokemon will be so good that even their like backline, um, even their like base form in their second stage will, they will get pulled up some too, simply because the evolution is so good. That's why I put Venusaur as an A tier because it's actually pretty decent. If you get it out, it's not S tier. We got, we got, we got stuff up there for S tier. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry we will get there all right so next mon is going to be oddish and i gotta be honest with you i haven't used oddish a whole ton um but oddish is 20 damage with ram 60 hp that's pretty decent goes into gloom and this is why i haven't used it. i actually don't have valplume yet unfortunately but you go into gloom which deals 40 and has 80 and then you have Valplume, which deals 80, but also does a uh, soothing scent, which puts you to sleep. Um, and I think the Pokemon that put you to sleep are kind of sleeper good. Um, but I don't think that, um, what would I put Oddish? 
potentially a D tier or I mean 20 damage and it has 60 HP. It's not bad. These might all end up being C tier. I think they're all good to be in, to be in C tier simply because with with the sleep Pokemon, you have to flip. But the cool thing with this is better than Hypno is that it's not 25, it's 50% chance. But we know 100% of the time that you are gonna go to sleep. You know, when I hit you, you're going to sleep when I hit you on this case. But are you gonna be able to wake up is the question. Whereas with Hypno, <laughs> you have to, Hypno is going to be lower than Vileplume, I think, simply because of like I just don't I just don't like it. You can you can hit more with Hypno, but it's tw it's a fifty percent chance that you're going to put them to sleep. It's a fifty percent chance they wake up before they start the round. It's a fifty percent chance that they're going to be able to wake up when it's when it when the round ends. Now maybe you only needed them to stay asleep um, for those first two, which means it's twenty five percent that you're that you're hoping for. Um, and then you can put try to put them back asleep if they wake back up. If they don't, then it's whatever. But I'm just not a big fan of those. Um, as for the Paris line, I don't like the fact that Paris takes two energy to attack as a base mon. That's not good if you ask me. And then I think Parasect taking taking um three energy to attack also pretty bad you can use it as a setup probably in conjunction with Lilligent, and i may try to make a deck with that but i feel like paras is just it just takes too much time to set up it does have 120 hp but there are other things that have 100 like for instance beedrill has 120 hp but it only needs one energy throughout the entire beedrill line so i'm gonna put this down here in d tier also don't don't think that all of my stuff is um like you know we're good. Like everything here is if you have any objections to my tier list, that's fine, man. That's fine. This tier list is not absolute. Nothing is. I'm just, I'm just a guy on the internet saying stuff. You never, you never know. So Venonat is a little bit unexplored. So Venonat, let's see. Venonat is 60 HP and does 20. I think Venonat could be pretty decent in some grass bills, but people aren't really using it. I will put it up here in C tier. And I think Venomoth, same thing. You can, you can deal poison with 30. And the cool thing about that is it's kind of similar to a, um, what is it? Uh, wheezing, but in this case, you're dealing the 30, you're dealing 40 damage basically. But if this thing gets taken out, it's out, you know, it only has 80 HP. So I don't want to put it too, too high, too low. It's kind of mid tier, but we'll see. Now, I personally think that Bellsprout is better than these, better than all of these. I'm putting Bellsprout in C tier. I'm putting Weeping Bell, however, into the B tier. And I'm also going to put Weeping Bell up here as well. I think that Weeping Bell is, well, honestly, I almost want to put it into the A tier. As for me, I love, I love this Mon. It does need a little bit of help with some other stuff. I'm going to put it in, I'm going to put it in high B tier. Weep, Victory Bell being able to pull in basic Pokemon is extremely powerful. Um, simply because most of the EX Pokemon are their base Pokemon. So you can bring those in and what does victory bell's ability do victory bell has sweets i mean fragrance trap basically what it does is any basic pokemon on the back line it can choose which one it wants to bring in so if it's in if it's in the active position and it and it, it oh you doesn't even have to be in an active position it's just an ability you can just bring anything up and um oh it doesn't have to be inactive i don't remember it does have to be an active never mind i'm sorry it has to be in the active position but you can bring any Pokemon that's base. So that means a Pidgey, uh, Mewtwo, because Mewtwo's are base Pokemon. Um, and then that, you can bring it up. So you can, you can bring that Pokemon up and most base Pokemon have 60 or less HP. This deals 60 damage. So it's an automatic wipeout, automatic wipeout. Only problem is it's a three stage Pokemon and you do have to get it pulled out a little bit earlier. But the amount of control with this thing is tremendous. Um, I think it works really great with Aerodactyl, my favorite deck, um, control issues. 
simply because you can blow the Pokemon out and they have to re they have to re um, recoup and come back up. You can also pull in fossils. You can pull in um, any base, any fossil, anything like that, and you can kill it in one hit. It's really good, really nifty. It really makes your opponent say, damn, I can't play down any more base Pokemon. Okay. Ex execute. Oh, man. Execute is going to have to go up here in front of Victory Bell. Um, I think execute is great. The reason why I think execute is great because you can put one, if you go first with, with execute, you, if you survive the beginning, you're going to go right into executor EX and that Pokemon is up here. I think it's better than uh, Venusaur. If you ask me, um, executor EX is kind of goaded. It, uh, it can deal 40 damage each time has a lot of HP. I think it has 160. Yeah, 160 HP and this thing it just it can hit like a rock or it can just sit there and just torment you and the only way you can get out is by Sabrinaing it and you know it only needs it needs three energy to like retreat but this thing doesn't want to retreat this, in some cases this thing is the like this is why you don't have to run things like um Kangaskhan and whatnot in your decks that may have like Venusaur in them and whatnot and it's a two-stage evolution so this is doing, it can do a hundred, I mean, it can, it can do 160 damage in two turns if you let it, you know, it, that's just a lot. It does have to flip, but it's only flipping one coin. So it's pretty good. It's better than Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan hardly ever does. Kangaskhan can sometimes do zero damage. This always does at least 40. So it's really, really good. So let's go to the next one. Now, Executor non EX. This thing just does stump. It's the same thing as regular executor, except it's only doing 30 damage. I'm going to put it down a level below because I think that if you don't have it, if you don't have this executor, you can throw this one on and it's still adding some damage. This is basically a better version of Kangaskhan, you know, because you know, you're dealing that 30 damage and you might deal 60 and you only need it one. You only need one energy to attack. That's one energy mons are extremely good. You still need one. You need, still need three to get out, but most people aren't going to get out. They're, they're putting this in here for the long run. Honestly, I'm surprised more people aren't, aren't experimenting with non EX executor because this thing can still deal lots of damage early, lots of damage really early and still not have to worry about losing two points with uh, like EX Executor has to, and you're only sacrificing a potential 20 damage. So pretty, pretty good idea for that. Let's see, um, Tangela is next. Would you believe I haven't really used Tangela? It, it has absorb, heals 10, 10 damage. Not really that great. Um, I'm gonna say that's probably why people aren't really using it a lot. I will put it down here in C tier next to Vileplume. I just don't think it's that great. I don't think it's that good. Scyther. I think also not a good Mon. I love me some Scyther, but unfortunately he's just not doing very well. And the reason why is because he doesn't have a ton of HP. He has the same amount of HP as um, some basic Mons like Geodude and he's dealing 30 damage. But like, do we really even like care to put this in a deck? When, when we do end up getting a uh, Scizor, that's gonna be interesting because Scizor is a metal Pokemon, uh, it's a steel type, right? Whereas Scyther is a grass type. So going for a grass steel deck, maybe that might be kind of, kind of, kind of cool. I don't see how that's going to go. Scizor is one of my favorite Pokemon. I do like Scizor, but, um, we have to see how this is going to go. Um, Pinsir, I've seen people playing with Pinsir. I'm also not a big fan of Pinsir. I will put him at the bottom of the D tier, but Pinsir, he could end up doing zero damage or he can end up doing a hundred damage. The only problem is that he has 90 HP. So instead of flipping a coin like with Doug's trio, Pinsir is just sitting there. You know, you're hoping you're going to be able to deal a lot of damage. Most of the time you might end up dealing 50, but do you really want to be put betting your life on the line for that kind of flip? It's not like a Marowak flip where you're dealing 80 damage that those extra 30 points would really do well for Pinsir, but you're not going to get it right. So that's the, that's the issue with that. Now these next few months, you, you rarely will see. <laughs> um, and there's probably a reason for that. So we got Cotney. I'm going to put Cotney down here in the, um, I think I'll put it in the E tier, I believe. It's got 50 HP, but it only does 10 points of attack. 
Now it does go into um, Whims Whimsy Scott, but most people aren't playing these because Whimsy Scott, and I'm gonna put this in D tier, but Whimsy Scott only does, I mean, it does, uh, I think 80, no, it does 40, has 80 HP and it does 40 damage. So the cool thing about these Pokemon is that they're colorless. So you can put these in other decks if you want to. I don't see very many people doing that, but I'm, what, what, I'm ex what I'm expecting things to do as this game evolves is obviously um, this is a grass type Pokemon, right? So what is grass weak to? Or, you know, like what, not, not, not what is grass weak to, but what is grass effective against? Grass is effective against uh, fighting type, I believe. I think there might be another one. I'm not thinking, I can't think of another one that is a, that is effective. I know it's a weakness against, um, not fighting, but ground type. So what is ground type effective against? I guess is what you're, what you're trying to say. Like a rock, paper, scissors type deal thing. Because if you look at, let's see. Ground type is effective versus dark type. So maybe you can put some of these into your deck and they don't have to have the energy that you would like need. They can use any energy, but they're still going to have a uh, strength against um, darkness, right? So you put these in and there you go. Now you have a deck that is weak to, but also has some strengths versus dark. So you can put this thing in there. And now you have a little bit of a counter. I don't see very many people doing that, but I think that's the whole meaning behind these Pokemon is to have a little bit of a success rate versus their, um, their weaknesses, the counterparts or something like that. You know what I mean? All right, let's go to the next one. Patil. I'm going to put Patil in C tier. And I'm going to put Lilligent in B tier. Did I, did I, did I miss it? Lilligent is going to go into B tier. Lilligent actually can be pretty oppressive, has a decent amount of health. And what it's doing is it's setting up the rest of your mons that are power hungry in grass. So I think that's pretty good. Oh yeah. Ground does beat electric too. So you can put this in your um, electric deck as well. I know it would sound kind of, I'm, so, I'm sorry, going back to um, Whims of Scott and uh, Cottony. You can put these in an electric deck. I haven't seen very many people doing it. But if you get into a match versus a ground mon, you put these in and you can actually have a counter. But no one's doing that right now because everybody's just packing in like Pikachu EX and a bunch of other mons, you know, because Pikachu EX has that ability that, you know, needs to have electric Pokemon out. So that's the reasoning behind that. OK, so but Lilijet is really great because you are putting you're, you're basically generating an extra point of energy versus um like i know i know gardevoir does something similar but gardevoir is not in the in the front lines attacking and i wish i think gardevoir is just kind of a broken card so it is definitely going to be an s tier when we get when we get to it but uh religion is definitely a nice alternative to that um i almost want to put it in a tier but it does die kind of quickly if you can't like um if you can deal with it so i'll put it i'll, I'll leave it there so uh skidoo has surprise attack and I don't like this mon. I'm gonna put it uh, down here next to Whimsy Scott. I don't like because you have to flip a coin and if it does nothing, then it does nothing. Flipping a coin for 40 to me is just not worth it. Now you also have Go Goat, but Go Goat I think has too much. I keep I keep going to the wrong. I keep bringing the cards from the other screen. Um, Go Goat does a little. It needs a little bit too much energy, so I'm putting it down here. It's just very energy hungry. So needing to go from to go from one to go to three is just not enough. If this if this was two energy, it would be much better. Now I understand that it doesn't need the um it doesn't it's colorless on the first one, and then these need grass, but at the same time, it's just still too much. It is still too much. All right, so now these are the grass mon. Let's go ahead and go to the fire mon. I think we know where Charmander is going to go. That's right. He's going to go in A tier. I don't think Charmander is great when you, um, I don't think Charmander is great, like an S tier card, but he does deal 30 damage for one amount of energy. And if you leave him up front, you can take out some mons pretty early. If you um, have like Giovanni or maybe you're like type advantage and stuff, I think that's really good. Charmeleon is going to be right up there with him. 
or honestly yeah charmeleon i'm gonna put right below we're not really caring about these though but the fact that you can just get that extra health boost so that you don't die with charmander and going to charmeleon you're not even caring about attacking you're not gonna attack and you're not gonna discard any energy or anything like, oh you're not gonna attack this one doesn't discard any energy but you're not gonna do that you're just gonna hold it off but it does deal 60 if something gets in the way so if you put this out there up front, it can take out some basic mons. It can also deal some damage to some things that you, you know, are afraid of. Now, Charmander standard. Charmander, it does fire spin, 150 damage, but it discards two energy. Not good. I think this is probably one of the worst. Let's see. It does deal a lot of damage, but I don't think you're going to want to go for this. Honestly, you probably could. Now that I'm thinking about it. No, I'm going to put this up here in B tier. I think I'm going to put this up here in B tier. People aren't really using this that much. But being able to deal 150 damage on this versus the other one that's dealing 200 damage. This is actually pretty good. Honestly, man, this whole line is kind of char 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 Charizard without the EX is already really good. If somebody was playing the Moltres deck and they had this Charmander out there, it's still doing pretty decent. The only difference is that with Crimson Storm, you're dealing 200 damage versus 150. This is still great. Most things are not going to be able to survive this. And if you can, um, it has a little bit less than Charizard EX which is definitely going to be our first contender up here for S tier card um, because it does the most damage in the game that I know of besides uh, Al Alakazam. But this is not a bad option. If you have two of these and you have Moltres, at least you don't have to worry about Moltres. I mean, honestly, if we get another Mon like Moltres that's generating energy and not a two pointer, this deck would be broken. But yeah, aren't Charmeleon and Ivysaur the same exact stats? Is Charizard line getting a boost because Charizard is better than Venusaur? It sure is. It sure is. Because you're you're not really afraid. Like when are you when when these hop on the field? What are you worried about? You're worried about Venusaur, but not as bad as you're worried about this when Charizard is out there. You're trying to get to that Charmander, you know. You, you can't, you're worried. These can't die because they're hiding behind something. Like a lot. They're all, both of these decks hide behind things. But if you compare both of these decks, I would much rather be facing a Venusaur than a Charizard. Yeah, they're going to be hiding behind Moltres EX. So it doesn't even matter if you have, if you have um, Erica or whatnot. You don't have to worry about it because it, it really comes down to the old saying can you win if you don't deal damage? You know, and then and then another saying, you know, can I lose if I if I always have my health, <laughs> you know, it's like, what is it? Where does it go? Basically. So I think that being able to kill everything is kind of this thing's um, is kind of this thing's um, whole whole persona, you know, Charizard with the one shot. You're right. Just wanted to make sure there is bonus points for Pokemon down the Evo line as well. Yes. Yeah, this is why I move these up here like this. I said that these are in B tier, but these get pushed up because of that. So, and, and this one right here, honestly, is really good simply because it's only worth one point. So, I don't know why more people aren't using the regular uh, Charizard, but it's nice that it's only one point. Vulpix, I'm going to put in solid B tier in conjunction with um, Blaine. Ninetales is going to go up here too. I can't put it in... Well, I'll put... Uh, it does 90 damage if you need two energy if you have this out and you have it on there it's actually pretty good and it's very um very um very strong very strong mon um eevee is not bad because the opponent can't attack if it's uh if it's out there you know if you if you have it out there uh you flip a coin if you hit heads then you can't attack so it's pretty good Yeah, Charmander can do some damage to uh, the early grass mons. If you have type advantage and you have a charge, you might want to just like reconsider your uh, your choices. Growlithe. 
Um, I'll put Growlithe. I'm not really that that afraid of when, when Growlithe is out, no matter what I'm playing. But I'm putting it in C tier because it needs two points to attack and it's a base mon. It does have 70 HP, but it needs two points to attack. So some things can um can start to well on this pretty quickly before it can even attack you. Especially if your opponent's going first. So I'm gonna put it down here in C tier. Arcanine needs three energy. You're probably gonna be using this. I'm putting these right next to each other, to be honest. You're probably gonna be using this in conjunction with Moltres as a as a kind of budget Charizard, uh, which is fine. And but I don't like the fact that Arcanine EX is going to need is gonna be dealing damage to itself. So I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it in C tier as well. The whole line is kind of C tier, it's kind of mid. But Arcanine only deals 20 damage to itself when it's a, when it attacks. So it's not that big of a deal, but it only has 150 health. So some things can kill it after it does that. Especially if you're dealing with like a water deck, you can kind of you can kind of take it out. Let's see. Ponyta. I think is a better. I think it's gonna be. I think the whole the whole line of like Blaine is B tier, to be honest with you. Rapid Ash is gonna be a little bit better. Simply because Rapid Dash needs one point of energy, does 40 damage. It's not bad. Um, and it's pretty quick to go. But it's an aggressive deck, so it makes sense. Magmar, I think, is bad. I'm not a fan of Magmar. How, how much do I not like him? Um, I'm putting him in D tier. Uh, I'll, I'll, put him, I'll put him above these. Yeah, I'll put him above all these, but Magmar is just bad. You you need two energy to attack and you're gonna be doing 50 damage, but yeah. A tier list, what a time to join, exactly. So we got Magmar down here in D tier. He's just not good. You can cut him out of any of your Blaine decks and just simply go for other Mons and you'll be happy. Um, you can even make a Blaine deck with Moltres and get tons of energy on your Muns and um, have Moltres out in the front lines. I would not put this in here. I, I would kick that out. Um, Flareon, on the other hand, I think is in C tier. And the only reason that I'm putting it in the bottom of C tier is because you have to find your Eevee and then you have to find your Flareon before you can even start hitting it up with Moltres. So that kind of sucks, but yeah. Honestly, it'd be cool if Eevee just counted as every different type of Mon, um, power of type of Mon before, but that would be too broken because it would be effective versus everything. So we can't really do that. Um, but you get what I'm saying though, right? Like it's, it needs some help. It really does. <clears throat> um, regular Moltres. What do you do again? I forgot. No one uses this card. They always go for the other one. That's right. It does sky attack, but you have to flip a coin. Flip a coin if the if it's a tails attack does nothing. That's right. For three energy, if I'm flipping a goddamn coin, I wanted to do something. So I'm putting this down here behind behind uh, Magmar. <laughs> for three energy, that's what it has to go. That's kind of crazy. Uh, regular Moltres S tier, man. I, I I I I it skips over everything, you know. Um, to have the two attacks and your your actual attack that you deal damage with, it does 70, which is really good, but you're very tanky at 140, and you only need two points to retreat. So if things get kind of bad, you can just retreat back. This is just a pumping Pokemon, and um, this is that that's what it does. It pumps and it wants to get back, and by the time you get ready to kill it, it's got enough Pokemon that you can't just make it come out unless you have uh, something like Victory Bell or whatnot, which is why I like playing Victory Bell versus that deck. Heatmore, he doesn't evolve and he only does 30 damage. He's not bad. People don't use him that much though. Um, I'm gonna put him in C tier, mid C tier. Um, Salazzle or Salandit, it only deals 20 damage, but it does go into 60 with uh, Salazzle. But I don't think these are that crazy either. Honestly, I'll group them all up together with Heatmore. Cause they're not really doing a whole lot of craziness and you can explore them. They would probably be a lot better if we didn't have all these EX cards taken over and kicking them down here to these uh, lower tiers. 
And lastly, uh, we got these. These are going to be B tier cards. If you can get these out and you don't have a Charizard, um, then Cinder Scorch and um, Sizzlepede are actually pretty decent. 130 damage and you're buffing those up with Moltres most, more, more than likely. That's about it. That, that's it for the Fire Mons. And now we're going to the Water Mons. This is actually the first, the first set of Mons that I got completed because I just got so many of them. All right, so we got Squirtle up here, and I'm going to put Squirtle. He's my boy, but I got to put him in the uh, B tier as well. And War Turtle is going to be right behind him. And we're going to put him at the bottom of it too. These cards, um, I can't really make them. Well, you know what? Actually, no, I'm putting them in C. I'm putting them in C. I put them in the bottom of C. Well, not the bottom. I put them right here. I don't think that they're super good. They do kind of okay. They have decent amounts of health. Blastoise is going to be B tier. Blastoise EX is. I like Blastoise EX. The only problem is that they rely too heavily on Misty. So relying on Misty just really is really not good. Because if you don't hit with Misty, you got problems. But the cool thing about Blastoise EX is it does have a, a, a move they can do for two energy. So that's not bad. You know, and I originally, I think I was originally, I had the regular Blastoise. It does 80 and you need the two extra energy on this. But you still just need so much energy on this. So this can't even be C tier, I think. I think this is only going to be down here. I think that its evolution is probably even worse than these. You don't want to play this card as much as opposed to Blastoise EX. This card is just not going to be doing the amount of damage you want to for the amount of resources you have to put into it. And it also doesn't have as much health. You know, uh, 150 versus 180, that extra 30 can go a long way. Psyduck, I think, is a great card. It's not S tier. It's not A tier, but I think it's a good B tier card. Not being able to allow your opponents to actually get into where they want to like, like you can't, if you can't use professor, if you can't use Sabrina and, and Psyduck stops you from doing that early on, honestly, I'm gonna put it up a little bit higher. I'm gonna put up a little bit higher than that. I think this is actually fine. I think, I think it's a really great B tier car. As for gold duck, gold duck is a great gold duck. I'm going to have to put over here. Oops. Gold duck is an A tier card. Gold duck can deal 70 damage for two energy, and it's a great setup from Psyduck. So you go into Psyduck, prevent your opponent from, even, from being able to use um, any of their support cards. Great. Also do a little bit of damage. Then gold duck comes out and just slams them with 70 damage, which that's 80 in total. So if they can survive that, I would be surprised if you go first with this, this is great. And like we were talking about in chat earlier, gold duck is kind of like a budget starmy EX. You're only dealing 20 less damage and you don't have as much health, but this card is very aggressive. So using this, I, I use this a lot in a lot of my, um, my, my decks when I was showing how to do the solo missions because it's such a good card. Um, and people sleep on it. They really do. Cause you know, what's funny. This is a, these are cards in the water deck that do not revolve around Misty. Same thing with Starmie EX Misty. If Misty didn't exist, these cards would still be great. Whereas with Misty, they are fantastic. That's it. When you can go first, when you can when you can take second, when you can get energy on turn one with Misty, these cards are kind of busted. You know, because you're going second and you're going and you're going first. It doesn't really matter. You know, you're gonna be able to evolve first, and it's that's when this deck really starts to high roll, or that archetype does. Polywag. I'm gonna put Polywag in C tier. This is gonna this is gonna be kind of crazy because I actually just started playing with the Polyworld deck. I mean the Polyraft deck. So C tier for Polywag. I think at the at the um minimum, high C tier for Polyworld, and I think B tier for Polyraft. And I think he's very un underexplored. I've been using this deck that involves Poly um Polyworld and Tentacruel, and I've been killing it. Um basically. You're dealing 80 damage with a punch with three energy, not very expensive. It's, it's, it's medium expensive, but you're also dealing 20 damage when they want to take this out. 
The only problem is it is a three stage, and I feel like for a three stage, it'd be nice if we could do like 120 damage, but this is all you got. That's all we'll take. Tentacruel. Oh my god. Tentacruel, I feel like, is right up here with with Psyduck. And I think that Tentacruel is right up here with Golduck. Super good, super extremely fast aggro decks. And there are only two evolution stage mons. And the fact that Tentacruel deals 60 damage, um, potentially, it deals 50. It is filthy, but it deals, it does poison. And the poison takes effect right after, right? So you're going to be dealing 60 each turn. That is kind of devastating. Um, and if they want to stay in, you'll hit them for another 60. That's 120 in two turns. And this thing has 110 health. Um, I personally like it more than Golduck. Um, you know, I'm going to do that. I like it more than Golduck simply because you can deal a little bit more damage if they decide to stay in and it has a little bit more health. That's the only reason. Beyond that, they're very similar cards, and I really like I like both of them. But Kiki's gonna hate that I did that. Um, seal, on the other hand, I think this seal is yeah, seal is colorless. But I'm gonna put it down here, and um, I'll put it in the top, or I put it right here next to Magmar because it's a base Pokemon that needs two energy, and it also needs two energy to retreat. And I hate that because if you get this pulled, how many times have you gotten a base pokemon that needs two energy to attack needs two energy to retreat and you get it as the only basic pokemon that you can have that you can play out on the first on the first one you know this is that is that sucks so much not having that ability to get it out and pivot to something else you have to use an x speed I, that's what this that's where this is gonna have a drawback and this is a chunky boy this needs three energy to attack and man, I almost just want to like put it down here. It does deal 90 damage, but I could just get that if I was to use a Starmie EX. So why not? You know what I mean? This is, that's about, I, I just don't like that. I'm not a big fan of that. Shelter only needs one energy to retreat. I'm going to put Shelter down here in C tier and cloister actually not bad if you want to try to hold off a lot of people use you can use some of the um where's where's shelter right there you can use some of the pokemon like this to actually um hold out and in my um in my deck i used with uh omni Omn star i would use this to hide behind which is not bad, you know? It does do 70 damage if you get it up to uh, three energy, but it's gonna take a while. But if you get it up there, your opponent's gonna have a lot of trouble getting this. And you're gonna be dealing, if they hit you, then you're gonna be taking less damage. So you can, you can kind of stay a little sustainable up there. I like that. Let's see what else we got down here. Krabby. This is going to be a long list now, guys. Krabby, I think, is kind of down here with uh, Cloyster as well. Simply because Krabby needs two energy, but he's actually trying to set up into Kingler. And Kingler is a little scary if you get him out and you get the energy on him. I think Kingler is scarier than uh, Cloyster because Kingler is, can deal... Kingler is basically a mini... He's basically a mini Marowak in an extent, but you have to flip two coins and both of them have to be heads for this to deal 160. I've lost games to Kingler before. I've lost games to Kingler before because I just couldn't do anything about him. Uh, and, and he's, he's very tanky with 120 HP and that 80, if it hits 160, ain't that many months that can survive that. I've lost coin flips to that thing before. We got quite a bit of months to go, guys. This is going to be a little while. This is going to be a little while, but you guys unlocked it. You guys you guys got the subs for it. Horsey, pretty good when you first start out, but not super not super good. I'll put it right up here next to uh, to uh, Shelter and Cedra. If I recall, I think this hit the back line. 
deals 50 damage to one of your opponent's uh, Pokemon. Yeah, I think that Seedra is not bad. The only problem is that you need that extra two energy, but you can actually use this in conjunction with um, Greninja, perhaps, and kind of make a, make a play with that. But it still needs a lot of energy, and that's the only thing that sucks, you know? And it does have to be in the front line. Um, so unlike cards like Hitmonlee, that can actually um, survive just because you can like swap them in really quickly and deal some damage to surprise. You can't do that with uh, with Cedra. So that's the big issue there. Uh, go this is actually going to be su surprise. I think Goldine is a surprise sleeper card. I think Goldine right up here with um, Bellsprout and Poliwhirl. Uh, because Sea King, I think is going to be at the bottom of, uh, at the bottom of, um, B tier because Sea King can deal 80 damage and it has pretty decent health and you only need one energy on it. So if you get that out there, your opponent is going to be terrified because I, I, I've been, the only reason I'm saying this and I hadn't really seen this in action until I did the Lapras event and in the Lapras event, um, this thing was actually killing a lot of my uh, mons that I wanted to keep out, like um, Electrode, it would it would kill Electrode in one hit. Um, and I was just sitting there like, yo, this is crazy. I think that this, it, or it does nothing. This is right, but you're flipping one coin. You're flipping one coin, and if that coin flips and hits, then great. If I do nothing on turn two, like what what is it? If I go first, and I, can, and I get into this right off of Goldeen and I have one energy, you're looking at 80 damage, I can kill you and you can not you can lose a game right there off one coin flip. That's amazing. You can't do that with stuff like Aerodactyl, which only needs one coin flip. You know, like that's, that's, that's insane. Staryu, man. Uh, Staryu is gonna have to be up here in A tier, but there's a reason why it's up here in A tier. And it ain't because of Starmy Nun EX, it's definitely because of Starmy EX. Uh, Starmy EX being up here, honestly, I think it's better than Charizard. Just being able to go into Misty and then on turn one, if you go first, 90 damage insured is crazy. And some, not, not very many things can get rid of this before by hitting this twice. And it can back up with, with it doesn't need any energy to back up. That's crazy. If, it, if this thing wants to get out, it just leaves. That's wild. And no one, no one says anything about it. Okay. No, people do say things about it, but it's, it's still very bad. Stormy 90 X doesn't do a whole lot of anything besides having a backup. It can back up whenever it wants to. It does the same thing as regular Stormy, but it, it only deals 40 damage, which is less than half. So I'm going to put it right here next to uh, behind seeking. Cause yeah, it's just not, not great. Magikarp. I'm going to put Magikarp down here at the bottom of C tier. Actually, no. Top of D. Top of D. I thought that Gyarados would be really cool in this game, and it just really ain't. I put it up here at the bottom of C tier. Gyarados takes too much energy to get started, and I hate that because I like Gyarados as a Pokemon. Always been a really cool Pokemon, but they just kind of did it dirty. With it needing four energy to attack, that's too much. It would be much better if it only needed three. If it only needed three energy, I'd be happy with it because it is dealing a hundred damage, but it's kind of it's kind of bad, you know. Kind of bad, and I know you can put more energy on Magikarp or whatnot, but only dealing ten damage and sitting in the background for a long time, it's just not great. And also needing this amount of energy to back up with this too. If this had two energy to retreat. I would, I would say it's probably better. Make me like, can you imagine having this in the front line and having to retreat for a, for four energy? And that's how much you have to attack with is four energy. That's so bad. You know, at least give Magikarp the ability to retreat without using energy. You know, that way that if you get this as a base Pokemon, you got to think about that too. You can get this as a base Pokemon on your first turn and not being able to um actually like really doing damage. And you, when you retreat, you have to use that energy that you put on it. No, let this actually sit there and um, have zero retreat, 
Give this extra retreat. I don't care if this has four, because if, if it dies, it dies. But I really need that on, on Gyarados. And maybe make maybe make it to where I can't attack the next turn. I don't know. With hyper beam, that's how that's how it was, anyways, right? You have to charge up, or was that or was that the other one? I don't remember. Photos was which one was it? I don't remember. Cause there's there's hyper beam and then there's um what's the what's the what's the other one that we got? I forgot which one it was in Pokemon. It's hyper beam and some other beam. Somebody knows in chat. Anyways, Lapras also very bad. Lapras is just bad because it, it relies too heavily on um on her solar beam. Yeah, so I'm thinking about solar beam takes a turn. Hyper beam I don't think has to recharge. But yeah, Lapras needs four energy before it's like really usable, I think. <laughs> Let's see. Lapras does hydro pump 20 plus 70. You can deal 90 damage, but you have to have four energy on it. That's too much. I tried Lapras out. It is a very thick thickums, but I would rather put something else out like Kangaskhan, you know, and we haven't even gotten to the color colorless Pokemon yet. So when we get there, we'll go into that Vaporeon. I feel is back here with Lapras, probably a little bit ahead of it. Vaporeon does do well because it can heal, but it you only got two Misty, man. Only got two Misty. And this thing ain't doing enough damage for the three energy I'm throwing on it. Sure, I'm healing myself, but sometimes it starts to feel like Cobble Tops. Except that I didn't have, I could have gotten the EV from the rip because it's a basic mon. So, feels pretty bad. Um, Ammonite. I like Ammonite. I think he has a good ability, but I think it's going to get overshadowed by some other things. Well, not Ammonite, but I'm a star. I'm going to put Ammonite here in the middle of C tier. I'm going to put Ammonite star up here at the, not the top of, well, I'll put it at the top of C tier. I'm a, I'm a star, really good Pokemon. You know, you can't attack it next turn, and surely. But because it's not on itself, if it was like Dugtrio and it was on itself, that would be different. You can just retreat out and then attack it. That's all you have to do. It's just the opposite Pokemon that cannot do it. So that's the issue with Star. You have to make it to where they can't retreat, but you can't make it to where they can't retreat. I think that if we end up getting a card that can work in conjunction with Omastar, it might be a little bit too much. But if they say, hey, this Pokemon cannot retreat next turn. If we can do that, then we can do we can use that trainer. The opponent's Pokemon cannot retreat and Omastar cannot move out of the way. That would be a lot better. But right now, Omastar is very much just in C tier. I would love to put it in B tier. Well, you know what? I'll put it at the bottom of B tier. Because I do really like Star, And I do think it's a probably a little bit better than Sea King Steel. And perhaps some of these two. But besides that, it's like just kind of bad. Um, Articuno, actually not bad. The, the, base, the base level of Articuno, I think is not a bad mon. Um, I think it's kind of up here in... It's probably up here near Star really um articuno is it paralyzes you and i think that paralyze is a much better form of sleep with sleep you have to like roll out of it um at the end uh, you can roll out of it before you start you can roll out of it at the end but you have to for most things you have to like you have to but it's it's, it's basically sleep but you have to flip yourself it's not me flipping to activate it i'm dealing damage and i'm activating it. and this is actually the first articuno that i had for a while and i was using it in for a bunch of my early decks and i liked it you know i, I did swap around from it because you, you rely on misty a lot and i'm not a big i'm not a big fan of having to rely on misty because you're not always going to have it you know so that's how i feel about that let's see ex articuno on the other hand a tier card a lot of these EX cards, I think, are just A tier. Some of them are not as good as others, but I think that EX Articuno is definitely better than Moltres Art um, EX uh, as a standalone card. Um, I know what this is doing and what it's capable of, but you can also have decks just based around Articuno, which is kind of crazy. Seems like you hit tails more than head, anyways. Talking about with with, uh, with Misty, you do, but the problem is that. It's a very Misty is the most high roll card in the game. If you ask me, you can high roll 
and you can go from you can you can high roll and win or you can low roll and lose right then and there and if you're banking on that with a card Articuno is the one that with Misty it can make or it can it, it can it can't break it but it can make it so if you get Blizzard early then you're dealing damage to the back line and to the front line which is extremely OP but you only need two points of energy to start dealing 40 and some Pokemon you can just kill before they can start getting you um, and that's really that's a really good thing to have uh, Ducklet I don't think it's crazy good. I understand that it's um that it's energyless, and so is Swanu, but they take too much energy in order to have them get them to work. And I'm not using Misty on these to to do that, but they are colorless, so you could you can put them just like I was talking about earlier with uh, Skidoo and um, Cottony. You can put them into uh, decks that will be effective versus other mon. Like for instance, these are effective against Fire Mon, right? And Firemon are effective against Grassmon. So you can probably put these in your grass deck and you can have, if you have some spare energy, throw it on them and they'll be dealing extra damage to Firemon so you can actually try to beat them um, out. So, Froakie. I think Froakie's pretty, pretty good. I'll put it up here in C tier, uh, high C tier. Um, and the reason by that is because you're going to go into Frogadier. What I think is low B tier. I think that's a low B tier card. Probably, probably about right here. Deals decent damage. Is also both of these are colorless, which a lot of people don't think about. But um, Greninja is honestly, I think that the I think Greninja is gonna go up here at the bottom of S tier. Some people might not agree with me on that. It might be our it's our first non EX Pokemon in S tier. Being able to deal. 20 damage anywhere you want to and 60 damage onto a Pokemon and you only need two energy. You only need two energy to do that. That's very flexible. That's super flexible. You know, um, Greninja can take out a backline Mon and then kill your front facing Mon or set up or can kill your front facing Mon and then set up your backline Mon to be taken out next turn. That's super flexible. Not very many things can do that. You can also back up with Greninja for one energy, put something bigger up front, use Greninja's ability to attack the front mon, and then hit the, the front mon with something even bigger that, that will, uh, in addition, will, will allow it to be able to, to kill that mon. That's crazy. And I've run into that situation so many times. Also, this hits around um, Doug Trio, which is you know you you typically can't attack Doug Trio, but this can this can go around it, you know, and and it's it's just an amazing ability, super good, and the fact that it's an ability, you can have this on the back line, and you can just have cannons just going out forty damage if you have two Greninja, and it's not terrible to go through the line with um with Froakie and Frogdeer. So it's really good. I, th I think that's a really good, really good, really good Mon. I think he definitely deserves to be S tier um, as the first, as the first one to go S tier. Um, PN Chimp Q, whatever, however you say this name, I don't know. It doesn't evolve in anything. And it only, um, you know, it has 70 HP, but it deals 30, I think 20 or 20 or 30, probably 20. No, it does 30, 30 with rain splash. I think it's okay, but no one uses it because it's, it's only, it's not going to be, um, it's not really doing anything. And you kind of want to be setting up to do some some game changing things, right? Um, I think that this Brushix is very good. It needs two energy. I'm putting it down here a little bit above Almastar, I guess. Brushix is kind of weird. It deals, they, if you have a Brushix in the back line, in, in conjunction with things like Greninja or Blizzard on the Articuno EX, this thing is kind of OP. Of course, here's the issue though. Articuno is already e OP. And if you're already at three energy and you're attacking for 80 on every mon that's in front of you, you're probably never gonna have to use your brushings. But if I do, but if I do, I got it. And that's really important because it only needs two energy. So if you've already gotten, you don't have to use Misty with this, you know? And I like that about some of the water the water Pokemon because having to use Misty is not very great.
Notice we haven't had any F tier Pokemon yet. We will. Um, Snome, I think, is um, kind of a C tier. Up here with Ammonite. Same thing with Frostmoth. I don't think that these are like super crazy good, but being able to put a Pokemon to sleep every single turn and you know that it's going to go to sleep and you also get to deal some damage is pretty good. Just like Articuno. Pikachu, on the other hand, this one I'm going to put. Um, it does knob, which is not bad. And you also set up. I'm going to put it on the bottom of C tier. A lot of the electric Pokemon would be good. You'll notice that there's not very many electric Pokemon. Oh, by the way, we finished the water Pokemon. We're in electric now. So Raichu, I love Raichu. Raichu is kind of good. I'm gonna put it at the top of, put it top of the top of C tier. So here's the thing with Raichu, in conjunction in the electric deck. Raichu needs a lot of energy, right? You're not gonna be using. You can recycle energy with Raichu like crazy, and that's the that's the thing that people don't think about. If you have, and people probably won't do this, but if you have two Magnetons which are only two two line Pokemons. You can have two two of those out there and you can um you can do every turn you have three energy if you do that. If you have a Lance, if you have not Lance, <laughs> you have two Lieutenant Surges, you can fire off Raichu two times. Now it does only have 100 HP, but Raichu can go kind of crazy if you um if you needed to. And that's a lot of damage. Is it 140 or 150? 140 damage right off the rip. And if your opponent has this, it's pretty much game over. Uh, it's very scary. Um, and the fact that most of the lightning Pokemon only need one energy to retreat with. Oh, man. That's crazy. All right. So um, Pikachu EX. Oh, man. It's going to go right up here behind Starmie EX. A lot of people think that Pikachu EX is better than Starmie EX. <sighs> it's kind of hard to say. They both have ups and downs. Pikachu EX needs three Pokemon in the back line in order to deal 90 damage. And it also is more effective against all of the legendary birds because it is a, um, because it is, wait, where is my Moltres EX? Did I do Moltres? Oh, there it is. Against all the legendary, or I haven't unzapped those yet. Moltres, Articuno, and Zapdos, if you're playing against another one, they're all weak to Pikachu. And Pikachu deals 90 damage, so he can at least, if if he's if you're effective to him, that's also the water uh, type, if you're a water type. If you're, if you're effective, then that's going to be 110 damage Pikachu deals just for having a family on his back line. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, and, yeah, so Psycho, uh, yeah, Magneton can only attach energy to itself, but... That energy that's on the back line, Lieutenant Surge will push that to right you. So if you have two Lieutenant Surges, you can push that to right you in the same, like the same turn. So that's what I'm talking about. And any energy that's on your back line gets pushed to right you. So that's crazy. So Pikachu, I think that this is good. The only reason that I that I that I uh put it behind Starmie is because Starmie doesn't need all of that stuff. He doesn't need all these backline Pokemon. It still does 90 damage consistently with two energy. Pikachu does not deal 90 damage consistently with two energy. But Pikachu, like I said, these have pros and cons. I just think Starmie EX is a little bit better. Because also, Pokemon that don't have to retreat, have, have to use energy to retreat, are crazy good. You, you have to put some X speeds in this deck, I think, to make it the, the best form as it can possibly be. But here's the thing. If, if I don't have to put X speed in my deck or two X speeds, I can just put one in there. This thing would be fantastic because you can put other, you have spots for other things. Then you could actually probably put another Raichu. And then, if Pikachu didn't have retreat, it would be the most busted deck in the game. And it already is close to it. You know, that's how I feel about it. And these are both, you can probably swap these around. Like real talk, you probably can. I just think the Starmie EX is really good because it doesn't have that retreat and you don't have to, it just on its own. It's good. Pikachu needs its family. It's like Vin Diesel, uh, Magnemite. I don't think Magnemite's that crazy good. I put it down here in the middle of C tier. Um, I think that Magneton is better because it makes, it makes that energy for you. And, um, I'm put it at the, I'm putting it in the middle of B tier. 
put it right here behind Lilligent. Probably makes sense to me. Voltorb, I think, is very, very close to star me, star you down here. And I'm not going to put this in uh, electrode. I kind of want to put it top of A tier. Electro can back up whenever it wants to, doesn't need to spend any resources. I think it's the only other Mun besides Starmie EX that can do that. And it it does need two energy, but it's it's basically it, it's it's kind of the um the uh the gold duck of electric. But because it can actually just back up without needing to spend any resources, you never have to put any extra energy on this besides two. You put two on it, you're good. Never will you have to put any other energy on it unless you have nothing else to put energy on. You're like, why not? There's no reason to do it because because he's, he 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 doesn't need anything to back up with. Same thing with Star Me EX. You don't need anything other than two energy. There's no reason to ever do that. Electabuzz is gonna be right there with its friend Magmar. <laughs> I think in D tier, Electabuzz is okay. Um, the only issue is that it hurts itself. You know, um, you flip a coin, this attack does 40 damage. If Tails, the Pokemon does 20 damage to itself. So it's not really great. You know, Electric Golduck, that means he's terrible. Oh my God, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Jolteon, I think Jolteon is way better than Vaporeon. Still going to be in C tier, but kind of higher up. Jolteon being able to flip those coins. And only needing two energy. You flip four, con four, four coins and you deal up to 160 damage. That's crazy. That's a lot for two energy. 160 for two energy? Potentially? That's crazy. I know it's four coins, but that's 40 per hit. That's that's good. That's a good that's a good mon right there. People don't use it that often. And I think people aren't using those EVs because it's so tough to um get them where they want to be. What I think would be cool is if they implement with Eevee some some uh, some stones, that would be great. So you can have stones in your deck that give you the the energy that you want or whatnot. You can have an Eevee deck. Oh man, that would be nice. So you can have energy outside of having to have that energy. Oh man, that'd be really cool because you only need one colorless. You only need one electric with Jolteon. And I think you need the same thing with Va with Vaporeon, right? They only need one of what they need. Um, yeah. If they do that later down the line, oh my God, that'd be great. Can you imagine an energy stone card? You can just have in your deck, have a bunch of Eevees in your deck, and then you can see where you go from there. But at the, at the same time, you can only have two Eevees at the same time. So we'll have to see how that goes. But let's see how the game, how the game um, evolves from here on out. Zapdos, regular Zapdos, not a fan. I think this is a bad Pokemon have to have to do. You have to need three energy and you still got to deal 30 damage to one of your bench Pokemon. Not great. I was thinking about something in conjunction with him and primate, but it's still not going to be good. Still going to be tough. Zapdos EX. I think this is a great Mon for, I don't think it's in the um, S tier. I think it's um, one of the uh, worst of the, uh, I think it's the worst of the birds, but I do think it's a great Pokemon inside of the inside of the uh pikachu ex deck because it, only, it can deal a lot of damage you only need one energy to move it around like most of the electric pokemon but you can deal a ton if you start flipping those coins you start killing things you know i think that's great um let's see a blitzel blitzel kind of slept on not gonna lie i'm gonna put blitzel up here in front of Victory Bell. And I'm gonna put Zep, Zep Shrika up there as well. Zep Shrika deals 30 damage and only needs one energy. Same thing as um, Blitzel dealing 20 though, but Zep Shrika can hit the back line, which is really good and has 90 HP. So you can hit the back line to kind of scare some stuff away to kill it. And kind of like Hitmonlee, but not really because Hitmonlee does not have an evolution. Um, but with, with Zep Shrika, you can, you can have a Blitzel out and then go straight into the attack position and start attacking things. If you have a Mon up there that can retreat, which is really nice for one energy at that. You don't even put any energy on Blitzel and it's still, it's still ready to go whenever you need it. 
I haven't dealt with um was it Tynamos? I think is what it is. Tynamo. A whole lot. He does deal how much does this thing do? Forgot. Deals 30. And I'm gonna put him down here. I don't see this this thing very much on the ladder. Um, electric does 40, has 80 HP. I keep grabbing the wrong things. And to be honest, I think that's okay, but still not super good. But when you finally do get to Electros, you're dealing 80 damage. It does take three energy, but by the time you've gotten there, you probably have what you need, especially because uh, Tynamo and Electric, they only need one energy to attack. So you might have some extra energy to be putting around some things if you're uh, doing that. But this thing can do Paralyze. Um, and yeah, it does have to flip, though. So that makes it a little bit worse. Let's see if I might I might put it down here, but behind Kingler or right next to Kingler, probably. Where is Kingler at? Oh, there we go. So because you had to flip a coin, it's not that great because you could you could not paralyze them and they can come back out and kill you the next turn probably. So it's probably kind of bad, kind of bad. Um, Heliotile, I don't think is that crazy good. I put it on here behind Pikachu. Um, Helio, Helios, <laughs> it does quick attack, but you can flip a coin and do 40 more damage. It is better than its evolution than its uh, base form, but is it that good? I think it is better than this. But I would probably rather be flipping a coin to paralyze my opponent than to. And then you're also doing the extra damage um, with uh, this third level form too, wherever I put um, Electros at. So makes sense why I would put this down a little bit lower. Got one more, and that is um, Pinchurkin. This thing can also cause paralysis. Um, and it does about the same thing. It doesn't have an evolution though. Does it not have a evolution and put it up here because you're not dealing as much damage or you don't have the, the chance to, but yeah, I'll we'll put it up here. She's about, she's about right. All right. So now all we got are, man, we got lots more left. Yeah. This is going to be a long video. Clefairy. I know you guys are probably sick and tired of Clefairy, considering that we've been getting so many Clefairy from the uh, Lapras event. This thing does slap, only deals 20 damage. Put it down here next to Pikachu, next to Nah. Clefable uh, does Magic Shot for 40. Not bad, but you're doing you're dealing 40 damage. You're dealing 40 damage for one energy. And if you, I, I like Pokemon that only need one energy and you can transform to them. So that means on turn one, if you go first, you can attack on turn three when it's your turn again with the evolution, which is good. Yeah. And Clefable, it does have a hundred HP. So it's actually not bad. People just don't explore it enough because there's other options you can throw out there instead, you know? And of course you do have to get that second, um, you do have to get that second evolution in your hand too. Whew. We gotta we gotta go through the psychic, the ground, the dark, the metal, and the normal types, and then we'll be done. Whew. This is gonna be a long video, guys. Abra, I think is good. I'll put it uh at the top of C tier. Simply because you can retreat with it without having to spend any energy, which is kind of weird. Kadabra, I'm going to put a little bit above it just because it takes so much energy to actually get this to work. So you're not really going to be using this that much. Um, and Kadabra only does 60 damage, whereas Alakazam, believe it or not, it takes three energy to get this thing going. But because everything in the game revolves around energy, I'm going to put it up here as a high tier, as a high A tier. It's the only thing in the game that can one shot Charizard, I think, uh, besides it can only, it's the only thing. No, no, I'm sorry. It's the only thing in the game that can, that can, um, deal more damage than Charizard. 
it, it deals a ton of ton of damage so if you're playing this deck and uh, there you go the only problem is that you have to revolve resort around um gardevoir to get all that energy on this because there's not very many things you're gonna be wanting to put up in front now they're gonna have more psyche pokemon to come and maybe they'll have something that can basically only need one energy and that's it throughout the line and still deals still does uh significant damage besides that it's gonna be kind of tough now slow bro is very, slow slow poke is okay i put it as like a low c tier slow bro i'm gonna put a little bit of heavy uh, above it but still in c tier and that's because slow bro just needs so much energy uh and it's gonna be doing 80 damage but it needs a lot Ghastly is going to be down here. Right here before Poliwag, I believe. Hunter goes up and he goes up a little bit further. Still in C tier, I think. Gengar. I think this Gengar actually not that bad. I'm going to put it up here right before Ammonite. And then Gengar EX. I actually might put that other Gengar up, up higher, but Gengar EX is going to be up here in A tier. Gengar, Gengar, what you want? I'll put, I'll put, well, Hunter stays here, but I want this Gengar to be up here. I think it's in high B tier because this thing does 50 damage, still prevents you from being able to uh, use your supports, which is crazy good. And then it has a decent amount of health. It has 120, I think. 130. That's that's kind of good. That's pretty good. And you can make this thing if you if you Sabrina this out, well you can't. If it if it's in the if it's up there, it's attacked you, right? So so you can't you can't Sabrina it out, you can't use Giovanni. So this is raw damage. You just gotta you just gotta you just gotta be able to kill it. You just gotta be able to get it out of there. You can't Sabrina it out. It can only get out if it wants to. Which is crazy to think. Uh drowsy. I think Drowsy is like down here at the bottom of C tier. Hypno is a little bit up higher of C tier, but I still think that Hypno sucks because you have too many times that you can get out of the sleep. Does that make sense? You have the turn that it goes, it might fail. If you go to sleep, if you go to sleep, then you have a chance to get up before your turn starts. So that means if it, if it hits, it's a 25% chance. But then if you miss that, you have another 25%, you have another 50% chance to, to hit it. So that means all in all, if everything went the best for Hypno, that means it was 50-50, turned into a 25, turned into a 12.5% chance that everything should go well, right? Is that the way that it would work? I think so. I may be wrong, but a 50-50 of a 50-50 of a 50-50 for things to all go bad is not great. And then if even if you do wake up on the last one, they can still try to kill you, but that's if you make it through all of that. If you never flip, then it's 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 kind of whatever. And they can do it again if they're still in the back line, but if not, uh, they may want to back up or whatever. They can still do it, honestly, if they were on the back, if they weren't on the back line. It just depends on how how tanky they're going to be and if they can make it. Mr. Mime. I played with him a little bit when I first got here. Barrier attack during your opponent's next turn. This Pokemon takes negative 20 damage. No one really uses this that much because, uh, yeah. This is not super great. You do have to keep attacking with it, but he doesn't have a whole lot of HP. So I'll put him up here. I'll put him up here above Clefairy. He does need two energy to do it. But the Psychic deck was the first deck I ever played. I just never played with Mewtwo. I think Jinx is a little bit slept on. I like her more than Mr. Mime. I'm going to put this up here above the other, like Blastoise and Flareon and Slowbro. I think that it's really good. It needs two energy. It needs one to retreat. has decent HP. But it only needs to two energy, and you can start dealing some heavy damage. It's basically a a Mister. Oh, no, it's basically an Alakazam Junior. 
basically. I was using this Mewtwo back in the day. It's not that great. It's okay if you don't have the other Mewtwo's. You can put this in there. I still think it's pretty decent, but you need four energy and you're dealing 120 damage. You really want to get the other Mewtwo because this Mewtwo just doesn't, it, it, it only has downsides to the other one. Less health. Sure, it's only worth one point, but who cares? Who cares about points when you can just kill your opponents? You know, and this is the only Mewtwo that I've played with Gardevoir with. Um, and it just wasn't, I just wasn't having fun with it. This Mewtwo. Man, this is going to be tough. It's going to be tough putting these up here. I think Gardevoir. I think that the only reason I'm going to say that it depends. These are all kind of interchangeable, but I think Mewtwo is the best card in the game. I think it has the health. I think it has the consistency with Gardevoir. Of course, you're going to need to get that Gardevoir line. But if you get that Gardevoir line, you know you're getting two energy every single turn. Misty, if, you, if you're going against a Misty deck versus Mewtwo, sure, it'll beat it. But I think that this is going to beat consistently more decks. And if you have two Mewtwo's, you have nothing to worry about for the most part. If I have, a ba if I have two Mewtwo's out, versus two star me EXs. If I get my Gardevoir line, I'm going to win. I don't have to level. I don't have to up. I don't have to evolve. All I have to do is get my energy and, and go there from there. If one of them dies, I can, I can one shot the other one and one shot the next one with four. They can kill me. And that's, that's really where it comes down to how versatile this deck is versus the other ones. I do like this, the quick aggro ness of these, the aggressiveness of these, but Mewtwo is pretty damn good when you just get the line you need, you know? Somebody compared it to the Hella of, of uh, Pokemon Pocket earlier, and I kind of agree. Routes is going to be an A tier card. Just because it's, it is basic form is not that, not that great. But. If we come over here and go to Karelia, I think it's also going to be up here in A tier. These are just getting pulled up because of this card. Gardevoir is an S tier card and it doesn't even have to attack. And that is amazing. And I think that's another reason why, like for the, the in conjunction with these cards, in conjunction, in, conjun in conjunction with like Gardevoir and Mewtwo, they are both S tier. Charizard and Moltres both S tier. That's just kind of how it goes. You know, there's not, there's not, there's not much you can say about it. You know what it's doing. You know what that is. It's it. You know, what's up, Drain? How you doing? Um, Wubat, not really afraid of it. Don't really care. It's going to go down here in uh, C tier. Honestly, I might put it down here in D tier. It's not really, it, it's kind of, it's kind of going down here. Not that good, not that great. I'll put his brother up here as well. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not really caring about either one of them that much, really. Um, if they have some abilities, then maybe they'd be a little bit better. Golet, I think, is a very bad card. Or maybe not super bad, but I think this is bad. I think this is D tier. Reason being, it takes three energy and three energy to attack, and man, it's just not... Whew. Unlike Mewtwo, you can never you, you don't have the health. You're not gonna be able to attack. This is just a sitting target in an active position. You can't you can't put energy on it in the back if you don't have what you want. So it's it's just kind of bad, you know? And I think that, that this is even worse. If you go into Golurk, I think that Golurk can get Sabrina so easily and you can't get out. You need four energy to retreat. You need four energy to attack. What are you going to do? It has a decent amount of health at 140, but I don't care. I'm just going to, I'm going to kill that thing so quick and, and, and I'm going to stand behind it because no one's going to be putting points on this thing. It's, it's very similar to Snorlax. Sandshrew, we're, we're done with the, we're done with the psychic. We're into the ground Pokemon. I think Sandshrew is a great Pokemon. 
I'm going to put Saiyan Slash up here as an A tier. Um, kind of up here with Golduck. Really? Um, they're very similar. Both dealing tons of damage. If I see a Sand Shrew out, I know that it's about to get, it's about, things are about to get scratchy. Um, I need to get, I need to get this thing out of there before it turns into this. 100 HP. Um, 70 damage. That's tough. It is basically the fighting type gold duck. Um, it's, it's extremely, extremely scary to see that thing out. Oh my God. Diglett. Diglett is going to be an A tier. And the reason why is because of Doug trio and them only needing one energy. So if you go first and I'm, I'm putting Doug trio up here as a tier, I think Doug trio is super good. You only need, you can deal 40 damage every single turn and you have a chance that your opponent can't even hit you back. And the, the, the reason why I'm putting him at a tier is a reason a lot of people won't think about, but with Doug trio, it, you're not affecting your opponent. You're affecting yourself. So they're going to have to use Sabrina to get you out. If you get the heads, if you get the heads, they, they just got to sit back. If they don't have Sabrina, they just got to sit back. There's nothing they can do. And then you can just have another duck trio in the background waiting. And it only has one energy to retreat. So it only needs one energy to attack. So if you retreat, you can always attack with this on the next turn, which is why it's so good for it going first. You get the first, you get first dibs on evolving. So you can go ahead and evolve into this on turn on the, on the first turn and you get your energy. You're ready and raring to go. Darn it. Let's see Mankey. So this, this is going to be kind of a, a weird, I don't think people will be using this regular Mankey anymore. I think they're using the new Mankey and I'm gonna put the new Mankey. This is basically what this is. Yo, Mini Morgan! Thanks so much for the raid. We're doing a we're doing a um tier list right now of all the Pokemon cards in Pokemon Pocket. Hope you had a fantastic uh, stream, Mini Morgan. Welcome in, welcome in. I think that I'm gonna look at this as if it's the the newer Mankey, the one that does 30 damage and deals 10 damage to itself. That one is kind of busted, <laughs> uh, especially depending on when it goes. Right, I love that new Mankey because the primate just feeds off of it. Being able to deal a hundred damage and wipe out some things. I'm going to put that in the, I'll put it right here in front of dig. Uh, actually I'm putting it down, put it up here a little bit above because people are probably gonna be running primate instead of sand slash. The only distance is consistency. Um, because people never wanted to hit primate or they never wanted to hit Mankey. And now you can hit yourself pretty good you know i think it's pretty good machop i don't know what people i don't know what people see in the machop line i'm gonna put it in the middle of seats here i think it's kind of basic um whoops the machoke i think it's a little bit better i put it in b tier now we'll put ex uh, well i'll put ex machamp up here at the bottom or the top, put it close to the top or whatnot. I put it right here. You're only dealing 120 damage. You're not doing anything. You're just dealing 120 damage. Nothing crazy. You do have a hundred and what? 60 HP. I think 180 HP. So you got a good amount of HP, but that's really all you got going for yourself and you can get taken out easily. And if you don't have a bunch of energy on this, you won't be able to like get out, you know? So. That's really about it, right? Now the standard one only does a hundred and only has 150 HP. So I can't put it up there with that one. I'll put it in the, uh, like mid to high, um, C tier or yeah, C tier. Geo dude. I think that is geo dude is kind of unexplored. I will still put this one in C tier. He does deal 20 damage and it has. It has um, 70 HP. The only problem is that if it gets brought in early, you don't want to you don't want to have it out. Graveler is only a little bit better than it. And then Golem 
I think is actually up in A tier. And people don't like using Brock, so they don't really use it a lot. But I think that this thing being able to one shot a lot of the EX Muns is pretty good. You just have to get to it and have four energy on it. But that's what Brock is for. But people don't want to use Brock in conjunction with Golem. But I think that he can be pretty decent if you have a low energy deck, like the one that I made, Brocked Up. It should be in the description of this video, by the way. But it's just really nice because he he's the only energy hungry card in that deck. So you can go kind of crazy, you know? Onyx, on the other hand, I think is good, but he, he uses too much energy, but not enough benefit, if you ask me. I'm gonna put him down here at the bottom of uh, C tier. He just takes too much energy. He takes too much energy to retreat. At least give me like a two energy retreat on this card because he needs three energy. I understand you can put Brock out and, you know, kind of go fast into him, but I'm locked in. I only have 110 HP. I know I don't have a um, an evolution yet, but it's kind of it's kind of troublesome on him. Cubone, I think, is gonna be towards the bottom of C tier, and then Marowak is gonna be like right next to him. Honestly, Marowak EX, I'm gonna go up to the A tier and drop him down up here. I think he's a, a good A tier. Um, Mon, I like him more than I like uh, my champ EX, definitely. And him being able to only need two energy and do be able to do 160 HP, pretty damn good. Pretty damn good if you do, if I do see some myself. Ooh, so many, so many Pokemon in this. We're getting close to getting done though. Hit on Lee, I think Sleeper OP. I'm gonna put him as a uh, B tier. Put him above Victory Bell. Being able to have a Pokemon that only needs one energy to attack and can swap in with anything in the front line and 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 scare people. No one's no one's thinking. Oh my God, I only have 28. If he if he attacks me, he, I'm only gonna have 20 HP or I only have 30 HP on my EX Pokemon. I should be fine. No, and I'll just back out. There's no way he can have more power than that, right? People are thinking that. No one's thinking that they're gonna go and, <laughs> and swap in a Hitmonlee and ruin your life, you know? Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is definitely better than Zeb Shrika. You're actually right, you're actually right. Zeb Shrika is good because it can do that, but Hitmonlee can do that without them even thinking about it. You can, you have to see that the, the Blitzel is out there, but Hitmonlee, that's crazy that you can just do that, and I love that about um, about that card. Because you can't run from the long leg of the law. You just can't. Hitmonchan, on the other hand, kind of boring. I wish I could have done something else with him. But he just doesn't do a whole lot. Like In comparison to Hitmonlee, like Hitmonchan, and I got to look for it real quick. But like, hold on one sec. Hitmonchan is only dealing 30 damage. You know? Like, they didn't do anything for Hitmonchan. That's crazy. Like he's he's just kind of like bad, you know. He's he's not doing anything good. I'm trying to figure out where I want to put him at, man. Like, I would rather have a Machamp than a Hitmonchan because even though I'm doing a little bit of damage, I can go into Machoke. You know, like it's just not that good to me. You're only you're not doing anything good, really. You do have a little bit of HP, but you only got the same amount as Hitmonlee. At least Hitmonlee is doing something. All right, Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn, I think, is terrible. Down here with E tier, um, I'll put it a little bit ahead of Golok, but it takes too much energy to get started, and you have no way to cheat energy on it. Same thing with Rhydon, hate him. Kabuto, I think, is okay. You only need one energy. The only problem with Kabuto is that you have to find that fossil. We'll, we'll get to the fossils, and I'll put them all in the same tier. Probably because they're all like the same thing or maybe maybe old Amber will be a little bit higher But um, I do like Kabuto Kabutops. The only problem is that he's not really doing I'll put him like up here like Beedrill is it he's a three-line Pokemon You can heal yourself, but 50 damage is really not a lot. There's a lot of basic Pokemon that'll survive that 
That's why I don't like him a ton. He's got he's kind of mid tier. You are healing yourself, so you will out heal those things. But if you're going up against something that can just deal more damage than that, you're you're kind of you're kind of screwed. You're kind of screwed. And we don't have any cards that can help us deal more damage besides Giovanni. And I don't know if they'll add any more cards that can help us deal more damage besides Giovanni. So we're probably just gonna have Giovanni. So that means we're only gonna have 60 damage we can do at a time, unless we're um, extra damage against them. And that's just, it's, it's neither here nor there. You know, it's neither here nor there. Me and Fu? And me and Shao, I think they're okay. Um, they are colorless. And like I was mentioning earlier, I'll put them in D tier though. I think the colorless Pokemon, they're decent. The only problem is that I don't see people putting these into decks. Like for instance, you can, like I, like I mentioned on the other ones, you can put these into some decks that are weak against that, you know, and that would probably work out. So they only need one energy and fighting is effective versus dark type bonds. So in normal type, so you could put honestly me and Fu and um me and Shao are actually pretty decent. I'm not going to lie. If you put those if you put those um in a let's see. Nothing you don't have to worry about the normal type or okay. Any deck can put those in there so you can see those. But if you put these inside of a psychic deck, which you don't, you won't see, but you put them inside of a psychic deck and you can probably make your psychic deck a little bit better because dark type muns are kind of the only thing that are affecting, um, are very effective. And these can kind of do, they can kill a, um, what is it? They can kill, uh, how much, how much does it do? You can kill a wheezing, a wheezing. Me and Fu does 20, which means it does 40, but me and Shao will do 60 plus a Giovanni. You can kill a, um, a coughing, a coughing, not a wheezing. So, but that's if you want to play around like that, but I don't know if anybody's going to be doing it right now. We only got 20 cards. So probably why nobody really uses the color list is because you can just put another Mon in there and you don't want to get these early. But it is nice to be able to play with these and not have to worry about that. I'm trying to cover your weakness. But I guess that's why people don't do it. Um, Clobopus, I have a ton of these things, by the way. I keep opening these. I don't know why. But uh, I think that Clobopus is okay, but not super good because it needs two energy. Um, probably about right here. And having the um, the other one, I forgot his name, um, Grapp Grappolus, this thing can, can do pretty decent damage, but because it can't knock things out and choose where they, where it goes, I can't really put it super high. Where is the, um, where is the, uh, grapple ox? There it is right there. I'll put it, I'll put this in like mid mid tier, but if, if you could choose what Pokemon comes in, it'd be much better. It'd be much better, but, but it's not cause you can't. So, so let's go over here. Okay, so now we're in the dark type. And you'll notice first off the rip, the dark type Pokemon, they don't have a ton of Pokemon. It's not even really that explored, to be honest. Um, but I will tell you this, Atkins is going to be B tier. Mid, mid B tier. And Arbok is going to be... It'll be like high high mid i think arbok is actually really good especially with his ability if you're going to use it you know what you want to keep in and they can't leave now they can't retreat not being able to retreat having to face this arbok can be deadly for a lot of things right um or even just making it stay in so that arbok can can die and then you will actually bring in something to kill that thing is very very Posh, you think you think you think Arbok S tier card? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I can I can probably put it up to A tier, but I don't think it's S tier. I will tell you this: it is it is it is probably A tier. It is probably A tier. It's probably up here with Tentacruel. I can't put it in S tier though because it's it's going up against these things. But being able to have to stick around can be bad for a lot of months. I will say that. Um, now. 
Arbok does form its own deck, but it only has 100 HP. It only does 60 damage. So you can still kill it. It just depends on how it's going to go. Okay, let's see. Um, Nidoran. Nidoran. Let's get you in here. Call for family. I think these are kind of bad. Nidoran. I don't think it's super good deck. Nidorina. It only does 30 damage. 30 damage for 30. Where is... Do, 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 do. These are all kind of like D tier. They're not. They're not that crazy good. Nido Queen doesn't scare me. You need. You can only. It says this attack does thirty or does fifty more damage for every Nido. Um, for each of your bench Nido King, that is very bad. You're never gonna see that like that. Like I think Nido Queen is super bad. You'll never see a bunch of Nido King just sitting in the back. Right, like it's like what are you what are you expecting, right? That they survived somehow. Um they don't have a lot of HP, you know, it's it's whatever. Um, and you can only ever have two two at the same time, so yeah, this is this is pretty bad. You said this tier F then? Uh I got I got some things I'm saving for tier F. I got some things I'm saving for tier F. Uh, and they're and they're and they're worse than this. I've actually lost to this deck before. Um, same thing with these. I think these are all e tier. I don't think any of these are that that good. Um, Nido Nido King, same thing. Needs three energy too, so it's like ugh. It's like it's 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 nasty, big nasty. Zubat. They're bad. Grimer, I think, is okay. It's not it's not great, but Grimer can go up here like a brown white cloister. Muck, I think, is fantastic. If you have all that energy to, to spare on it, which makes it kind of bad. But the cool thing about it is that with with in conjunction with Weezing, what you can do is Weezing doesn't need any energy. And Muck is the only one that needs energy. You just poison stuff and try to get it. But you can only poison one thing. And then once Muck is up there, it's like, eh. That's why this is C tier. I think Muck is good if you can do that. But you can't poison things yourself, right? So that's why it kind of sucks. And then once you take it out with Koga, it needs three more energy. That's too much energy that it needs. So that's why it's C tier. It's good, but not great, you know? Wheezing and coughing, on the other hand, they are going to be, man, they're like A tier cards, definitely. Um, well, I'll, you know what? I'll almost put Wheezing as a, Wheezing is almost a goddamn S tier card, because they're they're very good. I think it's better than Marowak too. Uh, I'll put them both up here because the fact that in conjunction with Koga, these cards are dangerous. Um, you know, I will put it up here in S tier. I will put it up here. I'll put it right behind um Greninja. These cards are dangerous. Being able to only need one energy and it has 110 damage, and you can't kill this thing. As soon as they can just do the math, but oh yeah, you can't do anything, bad boy. And then they can just pull it out, and then they have another wheezing in the back line. Then they have another coughing in the back line, and they'll just recycle it. I think you can I think you can recycle it three times before you have to stick around. It has 110 HP. That's hard. That's you can kill things like a um. What is it? Uh, a Moltres EX in a few turns. That's crazy. And also, it is it is it is um strong against Mewtwo. So that's an interesting deck. Now we get into metal. I think my will is bad. I'm putting my will over here with Magmar. It does take energy off, but I don't care. Ponyard, I think, is very good. When we get some more, um, Ponyard, I think, is up here with, like, what was I calling them? The, uh, the Gold Ducks and whatnot. I think it's up here with the, um, Psyduck and the, uh, Tentacruel and whatnot. And I think going into Bisharp, being able to deal 70 damage and have 90 HP is crazy good. I'm always afraid when this thing gets put out. Um, I'm gonna put it up here in a tier. The only problem, the only problem with this, 
the big problem with this is that um you don't you don't you're not gonna see a lot of decks running by sharp that's the issue um i could probably make a deck that has metal by sharp and wheezings and probably be much better than putting in male metal or muck um because it, that's the only thing i can do yeah i've already talked about right right you um day one already did yeah i i think the problem the problem with the metal decks is this next card we're gonna talk about meltan meltan i i love male metal but i'm gonna have to put meltan down here in c tier Reason why is because Meltan only has, if Meltan had like 70 or 80 HP, it'd be a much better Mon, but I can't put it up front and let it use its ability because it's so slow. I only need like one turn, one or two turns to get it to where I want it to be, but I can't really use this ability once because something's gonna kill it. And if something kills it, I can't go into my Mel Metal anymore. But I will put Mel Metal up up top. I will put Mel Metal up here in like B tier if you can if you can get this out. Great Pokemon, hundred and what is it? Hundred and thirty damage each turn, hundred and twenty damage each turn, and it takes less damage. Great, great Mon. Uh, it's better. Honestly, I'm gonna put it up here better than um, better than better than Machamp EX. The only issue is that you have to get it there. And if you look, it, it needs three metal energies, three metal energies and one colorless. There's a lot of other Pokemon that just need like two colorless and we can put anything else on there. That's kind of tough. That is kind of tough. You know, that's my big issue with that. Now we got some, some Contra. These are probably mid tier. I'm gonna put this like high C tier probably for these because they're so inconsistent i'll put dratini right here i'll put dragon air right above it about right here because dragon air actually not bad if you get that that um that water and that lightning and that colorless it can, it can be a conjunction with any of these you're doing 80 damage you got 100 hp but you know the star it is dragonite if you get dragonite out and he's ready to go you, I don't think very many things can survive a double Dragonite hit. I'll put Dragonite up here in high A tier, but that's because if you run him twice, ain't nothing surviving that shit, you know? All right, now we only got the, we got the colorless and the trainers. Man, Pidgey, I think is a B tier card. Pidgey's B tier. Pidgeot, I think, is right above it. Just slightly. And Pidgeotto is an A-tier card. Pidge I mean, Pidgey... I'm sorry. Pidgey, Pidgeotto, and then Pidgeot is an A-tier card. It does 70 damage. You do have to get there a little, a little easy, but you have the option of... Does it need to be... Does it need to be... Um, does it need to be in there or does it not do you do you not need to have this Pokemon in there? You get to have a Sabrina every turn. That's pretty powerful. Um, Radita, not that crazy good. I'll put it down here. Radicate, probably D tier. Sparrow. I'm gonna say these D tier. A lot of these are just kind of like okay. Pharaoh's not not super crazy good. It does do a little decent, but the whole energy thing is not super crazy bad. Jigglypuff. C tier. Wigglytuff. C tier. Wigglytuff EX B tier. And probably about like right here. Cause it's dealing 80 damage and putting you to sleep. Meowth, I think actually kind of high C tier. Being able to pull cards is very powerful in this game. Persian. I think I think it's very similar to uh Meowth. But but you it's it's really just in conjunction with Meowth. 
you don't really have to care too much about it. Um, but the thing about it is that if you can honestly, I'll put it as like a people don't play with this that much. But if you get a coin flip with with a person and you get rid of something in their line, that card is gone for the rest of the game. Just because I attacked you and I flip a coin on heads, your card is gone forever. You can get rid of potions, professors, researches. You can get rid, and it's and it only needs two energy. You can get rid of stuff like um a Dragonite line and that whole you you've killed that Pokemon basically. It's gone. You know, it's not put back in the deck. That damn thing is discarded. So yeah. That's that's tough to think about. Hmm. Farfetch needing one point for 40. This is probably an A tier card, and people don't look at it that way, but be, needing four, one point for 40, going on turn two, you can win the game just by killing a lot of Muns, and they only put one out. <clears throat> and them not knowing, and he's also very flexible. I think he's, honestly, I almost want to put him in, 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 in flipping S rank. Such a good, I'm, I'm going to put him right here. And put him right here. Because Farfetch can win a lot of games. Um, Dodo, this is like a it, it's a it's a energyless. I mean it's a, it's a colorless, a colorless um good Pokemon. But Doug Dotrio doesn't need anything to retreat off of. It only does forty damage. Mm. I'll put this here. People don't use this that much though, because you have other options that are better. Lickitung, I think Lickitung is bad. Honestly, man. Lickitung is probably my first F tier. I think Lickitung is my first F tier. Simply because Lickitung needs so much setup. You can do a lot, but only if only if you got you got wrecked by Lickitung yesterday, but Lickitung is like Misty. You know, it's like Misty. This thing can attack twice, but I think that it's just it's just bad. It's probably my first F tier. We have some more F tier that we haven't got to yet that are here, but yeah. Chansey. Chansey's also really bad. Man, it's the fatties are bad. You'll notice that the fat cards, the ones that are like really big, you can't really, you don't have any flexibility about them because you can kill Lickitung before it can start trying to kill you. And you have to put three energy. There's no way to get extra energy to put on this. So you have, this is three. It takes three turns for Lickitung. You know, it takes more than three turns and you can, you should have killed this thing probably by then. It only has 90 HP. That's three hit on Lee kicks. That's, that's two, that's two, uh, two in a Giovanni, um, far fetched. You got so many options to kill this thing. Kangaskhan on the other hand, I think is B tier, high B tier. Can I get a high B tier, please? High B tier for Kangaskhan. Super good. Super good card. Um, Tauros. Uh, I also think this one is a little bit better than the other ones, but it's definitely better than some of these Nidoran lines, but people don't use it. Ditto F tier. Ditto is definitely an F tier card. Reason why Ditto is an F tier card is because you have to. Now I will tell you this versus all of these if you have, if somebody is using a, a colorless deck, Ditto's fantastic. Ditto is fantastic. I have lost a game because I was playing a colorless deck and they put me in versus somebody using a damn Ditto, and I lost that game. They were able to Aerodactyl me. They were able to blow me away. They were able to use my Persian to to to, to discard my cards. I was like, what is going on right now? This is this card is great. But then I look over here and I'm like, wait a minute. What the hell's going on? This is crazy. 
This is crazy. Ditto is ditto. I love the card, but it's terrible. You cannot do stuff. You cannot do stuff. Evie. I'm going to put Evie in D tier, but you can't really put it anywhere because it's not really doing anything. That's all of these Evies too. Like they're, they're all the same. I don't know why they got all three of them here, but, um, po po Polygon, I think is also F tier. Fuck. I care. Why, why, why do I care about what, what I'm finna pull in my deck? I guess if I don't want to pull anything and just pull the cards, man, there's only 20 cards. It doesn't even do a whole lot of damage. I mean, it does 20 damage. Just not good, you know? It's just not good. Um, Aerodactyl? Y'all gotta put some respect on my boy's name. I'm putting Aerodactyl as a, as a A tier mon. And people don't think he's good, but Aerodactyl is crazy good. When you can take out somebody's entire energy, their entire their entire card line for two energy, that's good. That's good. You can you can ruin them completely and you can win this by crazy good. What does Arrow do again? Aerodactyl? You flip a coin, if it's heads, that Pokemon goes back into the deck. Yeah, that's the wrong era. Aerodactyl, if you flip a coin and it goes, it goes back into the deck. Why is that important? If they have a Charizard out and they kill something on your side, which Charizard for the most part is the only thing killing stuff in that game, Moltres isn't really going to be attacking because people don't like the RNG of it, Hunter. And people don't, um, people, it doesn't deal damage. So that's crazy. You know, people don't like that. Also, you can't pull the old Amber with a, you can't pull old Amber with a Pokeball. So that's why. But with Aerodactyl, it has a hundred HP. And if you get a coin flip and you flip heads, it goes back in the deck. It is. And I have won games by doing that. It, I've won games by flipping a Pikachu back into the deck and then they cannot catch back up to me. Because you you are basically resetting the game, you know, and that's and it's only for a little bit of energy. You can sometimes win. A, I won a game by flipping. I won a game in the tournament the other week just by sending them out. I sent every car they had back into the deck. They had no basics on the field, and you you win if that happens. You know, I love Aerodactyl, and people are gonna call me insane, and I can't wait until it wins. Another F tier card, Snorlax. Snorlax is bad. Don't use him. I feel bad for this. He he does 70 damage, but four turns of putting energy on this. He doesn't have the health. If he was a 200 health card, he'd probably be a little bit better. 200 health card might be better. But he he doesn't have the he does not have the amount of health that he needs. And um you can just put in, like, for instance, I compare him to Moltres all the time. Moltres has, has 10 less health than him, right? But, but Moltres can attack with three, with three energy. But Moltres is also doing something with one energy. At least let Snor if if they gave Snorlax a two energy move and they gave him the this move as well, but his two energy was rest, and it was like heal thirty damage maybe or heal forty damage with rest. Why can't we have that? Why can't we have that? That would be a much better Snorlax. And maybe that's Snorlax EX. I don't know, but I don't like the fact that the non EX version of Snorlax is so dog shit. I don't like that. Um, I think this Pokemon is a little bit unexplored. Uh, people don't use this that much, but its counterpart only needs one evolution 
and for three energy of colorless energy, this thing can deal 90 damage um, per, we can deal 30 damage per Pokemon that's out there on the field. So I think it's pretty good. I think it's definitely better than Magma, but this thing can actually, can actually be better, right? And you only need things in the background. So if you put, if you put this out on the field and you have stuff like, if you can get a Greninja out and you can get like stuff that it just sits in the background, you might be able to do something, you know? This is not a bad Pokemon, but people don't use it. Uh, Wooloo, bad. Put it down here. Uh, Double, also bad. A little bit better, I guess, than the other kind of part, but, but needing the two energy to attack and the three energy to attack, just not good. You don't, you don't want to do that. The fossils, I think the, all the fossils, it depends on how you look at the fossils. If you look at them in a sense of, of like how people are using them in high tech, they're kind of a tier. If you don't look at them like that, then they're, they're, they're bad. If you're trying, I'm going to use them in the sense of how people typically use them, which is to evolve them into other things. And, and for that reason, I'm going to make them all like mid C tier. They're all going to be here. The same reason why is because you can't pull them with pokeballs, but I got one. That's a little bit better. Old Amber is actually better than the other ones though. The reason why I think old Amber is the best is the best fossil. You only need, you only need old Amber and Aerodactyl to make it work. But for the dome fossil and for the helix fossil, you have to have the base Pokemon and you have to have, you have to have stage one Pokemon and the stage two. That's too much. That's too much. Cause you, you, you got to search your deck for all three of those components. So it becomes kind of jank. That's why I like running me off with these. Cause me can pull these professor can pull them. Pokeball can't not good. Wow. We're almost done. We only have the trainers left. All right, let's go ahead and hit up. Um, I think that the worst trainer in this bunch has to be hands down Brock. Unfortunately, I think that he's still decent. If you play him right, I'm gonna put him down here in D tier. Erica is gonna go into high B tier. Dealing 50, dealing 50 damage worth of healing is very good. Uh, Misty, oh my God, our first S tier trainer, believe it or not. That card can be, you can live by it, you can die by it, but you can die by this card easily. And, and in conjunction with decks like Articuno and Starmie EX, you don't even care about Misty hitting that much. It just it just can supercharge your chances of winning. Okay, um, Blaine, I think is a it's probably up here with with Erica because he can make or break his deck, but he's also not like super crazy good. You want to play uh, aggressive water decks for the most part or, or aggressive electric decks, which we're getting to uh, Lieutenant Surge. I think he's less than them, but Lieutenant Surge in conjunction with Raichu, really great. I don't care about Zapdos that much, but Lieutenant Surge is really good. I'm not going to put him up there with Erica and Blaine because he's very situational, but still though. Um, Koga, I think is high a tier, much more technical, but high a tier as a trainer. And I am going to put both Giovanni and Sabrina as S tier trainers, um, ahead of Misty. The reason why they are ahead of Misty, honestly, they're going to be up here. Um, I'm gonna put them up here. They're very versatile. They're very versatile. I'm gonna put them above Mewtwo too, because there's, you can use them in any deck. Sabrina, definitely. Giovanni, but they're just kind of like great. You, you need to get your Sabrina and your Giovanni's when you start this game. They're so good. And where's Professor Research at? Professor Research is not here. Pokeball is not here. But I can tell you guys where they would be if I got, if they were in the game, if they were in this tier list, Professor Research, they go up here right next to uh, to these three. I mean, these two. And Pokeball is going to be up here too, unfortunately. Um, Pokeball probably might even be more important than Professor's Research. Um, 
Oh yeah, Reg, we don't have the uh the trainer cards, do we? We don't have those promo cards. Hmm. I don't have them in this list because whoever made this list didn't add them. Stair fault. Don't, don't be mad at me. But a uh, red card is a, I think a red card is an F tier card. Even if, even if you win because you use a red card, you have no way to know that that's why you won. Um, uh, I will also put the, uh, what is it? The, uh, looking the spyglass. I would put that down here. Pokedex. I'd put that down here. Um, what else would I put down? What what else would I, would I put other things at? Um, let me see what I'm missing. Let's see. Do -do -do. Item cards. Potion is going to be an A tier card. Simply because having that extra power can really make or break a lot of decks. So I'd put it in here somewhere. Yeah, hand scope is an F tier card. I think that's stupid. Um, why are you going to look at the train as it's coming towards you? Like, if, uh, and if you have a red card, great. But somebody literally red carded me earlier today and they gave me exactly what I wanted. X speed is going to be an A tier card as well. Being able to, um, to maneuver without wasting energy is very important. Um, I already said poor Pokeball is going to go. So, yeah, I think that's it. Lapras. Lapras is a C tier card. I feel like the Lapras EX. Maybe even a D tier. But those are the, those are the cards. I wish they were in here. I would have put them in here, but they're not. So. Yep. But that's that's my tier list. Um, I'll go through it really slow real quick so you guys can kind of like see it at the end. But yeah. Which card did you put at the place one in S tier? I put Giovanni and Sabrina interchangeable. And then Mewtwo. This is a tier list of everything in this game. So it can definitely change. Um, if I was to like go down and like say, oh, let's let's what I might do from here on out is um, if I decide to do a, another tier list, I will do one that is only. We'll, we'll do one that's only like the types. You know, and we'll see how that goes and we'll do like things that go only into that um, that typage. So there you go. There you guys go. Man. But that that took a while. That took quite a while. How do you guys feel about it? What was something that you really didn't like about this tier list uh, as I was as I was doing it? Um, if you're in the com, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit up the comments and tell me what you think. Um, if you have any issues with it, let me know because it, it's my opinion. It, it's not it's not correct. You know. It's not correct. And I think that this is very much dictated about EX. You know, if EX was not a factor, how would we use these cars? But EX is in the game, you know, and they're very powerful and they do a lot of crazy good things. I want to see a world without EXs and how that would be <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's what I want to see. You know, that would be that would be really cool because um, when I'm over here working my ass off trying to get uh, Mel Metal up to four energy, and then Moltres is over here just jerking off Charizard and then I just get blasted. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not great. It's not fun. It doesn't feel good. I don't like it. So you guys tell me what you think. All right. Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye.